Hi, welcome to this video on reporting metrics in vulnerability management. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the following learning objectives. One, what is reporting in vulnerability management? Two, what are the key considerations when creating a report? Three, what are the common vulnerability management KPIs? And finally, we'll be taking a look at reporting tools when creating reporting uh, for vulnerability management. Okay, so let's take a look at the definition of reporting and vulnerability management. Reporting and vulnerability management can be defined as the process of documenting and communicating information about the vulnerabilities and security issues discovered within an organization's IT infrastructure and applications. Okay, so what this definition speaks to is that um, after you run your, your security assessments, um, you definitely you have to um, you definitely find some findings, and those findings need to be communicated to two different groups. Uh, firstly, the technical groups, and then also the executive. Okay. This is considered as a C suit. So my goal in this video is to focus on the executive. Okay, so when you create your report, um, uh, there's a different language by which you use to communicate with the executive um, as to communicate the findings and security issues uh, based on the security assessment that you identify as security as a vulnerability engineer. And um, the key thing is that the reason why uh, the executive need those type of report is that it helps them to be able to make informed decision as to those findings that are based on the security um, assessment that was done. So one of the security, one of the um, decisions that the executive might want to make is do we need to hire more people? Uh, so when you look at the reporting, uh, probably they're, they're paying attention to remediation, uh, remediated versus um, non-mitigated vulnerability, for example. If the ratio between non-remediated vulnerability and remediated vulnerability is, let's say, 10 to 90, for example, then that speaks to something that needs to be done. Is either we need to change the process or do we need to invest in our um, engineers or do we need to purchase an additional tool? Do we need to look at automation? Or do we need to even need to assource this whole vulnerability management um, process to a third party organization, to a managed service provider? So, uh, so whatever you're doing, when you're creating the report as a vulnerability engineer to, to executive, you need to think in the management, uh, you need to wear a management hat. So that allows you to be able to speak to them in a language that they can understand and then they can use all of this information. They can use that um, vulnerabilities or security issues uh, that's been discovered to be able to make uh, informed decisions. Okay, let's proceed. So what are the key considerations when creating a report? Uh, firstly, uh, your report should align to the cybersecurity program uh, within your organization. And what is a cybersecurity program? What does it mean? Cybersecurity program provides you, it allows, it speaks to different domains within your organization and what are the procedures, what are the policies that's, that's in place to address those different domains. So a typical example, a cybersecurity program should have different, should speak to different domains such as vulnerability management, okay, it should speak to threat intelligence, it should speak to endpoint security for example. Okay, it should also speak to uh, acceptable use policy as well, acceptable use policies, and also compliance, and many other, um, uh, many other uh, domains, uh, depending on um, the industry that your organization uh, plays in. So, uh, so I'm going to pay attention to vulnerability management, for example. So for vulnerability management, um, your organization definitely will be looking at, they, they have um, what, they, what they want the vulnerability management uh, procedure or processes to look like. So one of the things that definitely will be looking at what some of the KPIs that they want to use to measure the vulnerability management process, 
um, in terms of also paying attention to meditation, also paying attention to the technologies that is being used, and all of those type of um, uh, things. So uh, when you're speaking to your report, you should align with those goals um, in terms of what the organization is looking at for when it comes to vulnerability management. Um, another thing to also pay attention to is your KPIs, um, your key performance indicators, uh, which will be communicated, which is being measured by the CISO. Uh, one of the things they're definitely looking out for is they want to identify, they want to understand your security posture. Okay, in terms of in terms of risk. So the goal is um, looking at our, our environment now. Are we high risk or is it a low risk based organization? Um, if you have a lot of, if your applications, are, if the applications you make use are more internet facing, one of the questions you're asking is what's the security posture of our organization? Um, those applications we have facing the internet. Uh, what's the risk level? Is this is it high? Is it low? Are we remediating those vulnerabilities? Are we identifying those vulnerabilities effectively? What's the process by which you're remediating those vulnerabilities? So those are some of the KPIs. Those are some of the things that your CISO is definitely looking out for, especially when you're submitting vulnerability management report. And then thirdly, another thing is the key goal indicator. Um, definitely, the key goal indicator uh, varies depending on different organizations. So uh, your organization might say we want to increase our security posture, let's say from a 60%, uh, from a 60% to a 90%, uh, let's say within a two year period, for example. So whatever reporting you're providing should align with this uh, with this keyboard indicator. So, so the, uh, the idea behind this is that Whenever you're creating a report, you, you, you have to wear a management hat and say, um, what are the things that will be of interest to the management? What are the things that they want to pay attention to? Because now that you understand the definition of a report, knowing fully well that you're documenting, you're communicating, and um, your security findings to top management for them to be able to make informed decisions. So whatever thing you're going to be putting in that report should speak to those um, different um, segment. Okay, so next is next is what are the common vulnerability management KPIs uh, that you should include um, in your reporting? Uh, first is a most vulnerable asset based on severity um, severity levels. So uh, depending on your organization, depending on how your infrastructure is being set up. Um, you might want to provide, definitely you want to provide vulnerable assets uh, based on the severity level. Uh, probably this asset are high risk or this asset are low risk. Um, you also want to look at the vulnerability count uh, based on the risk. Uh, you also want to pay attention to classify the risk uh, based on risk threat indicators. Um, how exploitable are those vulnerabilities? Uh, what are the most exploitable vulnerabilities that we have? Which applications are more uh, are, are very much exploitable? Then you're looking at it from a risk perspective. Uh, what are the attack types um, that are available there that can uh, you know leverage that can exploit those type of vulnerabilities? Um, also, you want to classify applications uh, based on the severity level as well. And then you also want to look at uh, remediated versus non-remediated vulnerabilities. Uh, when we say remediated, uh, in the last 30 days, how many vulnerabilities have we remediated? How many vulnerabilities have not been mitigated? So uh, what's the ratio like? That in itself would you know, provide us with value as to um, um, are we ensuring that we are remediating? What's the mean time to remediating vulnerabilities? Uh, so those this type of metrics would allow you know um, executive to be able to see if the process, the remediation process is working. Do we need to modify some processes? Do we need to hire more people? Do we need to invest in tools? So all of this information helps to guide the senior management as to how to increase the security posture and how to you know, measure the vulnerability management uh, process, um, as the case may be. Also looking at zero-day attacks, vulnerabilities, 
Um, zero day attacks are attacks that there are no remediation for as at when those vulnerabilities have been uh, have been disclosed. Um, so in this type of scenario, you might want to start looking at what are the controls you might have to put in place for such vulnerabilities. Do we need to isolate the applications? Do we need to put this application in a separate VLAN? Do we need to put them behind an IPS, for example, um, so that we can at least identify or, or you know identify some of these or reduce the attack surface of that particular application so those are some of the um, kpis you can also leverage in as well and you can also want to add um, asset compliance to regulatory standard as well um, so which asset what's the compliance level of your assets um, is the compliance level is it like a 40 percent is it 70 is it 80 percent so some of this information also helps to play to understand how compliance with asset are in terms of configuration settings to a CIS benchmark, for example, uh, because being uh, someone being someone that's been in vulnerability mining for quite a while, you just don't only scan as well. You also need to pay attention to um, compliance as well when it comes to regulatory standards. And then finally, you also want to pay attention to the vulnerability trending in terms of vulnerability age. Um, what is the what is the average age of vulnerability in your environment? Um, I've seen environments where they have five years vulnerabilities that have been locking there and that they haven't been remediated. And the truth is that the higher the vulnerability age, the more you know susceptible you have to being being exploited or being compromised. So the idea is to ensure that you reduce the vulnerability age within your environment. So these are some of the KPIs that you know shows the current security posture of your organization when you run your vulnerability assessment. And these are the things that um, executives are looking out for. These are the things that they use to measure um, the value that the vulnerability assessment has been uh, is uh, the value of vulnerability management to the organization, um, and this KPI does not doesn't really sit. Uh, it's not only measured, or it's not only for um, um, for being when you're running it internally. You could also use this KPI also if it's if it's been managed by a third party organization. So these are some of the KPIs that can also be leveraged on when it comes to providing. Uh, reporting and then finally is the reporting tools. Um, most vulnerability management tools, uh, you definitely have they have reporting templates you can leverage on. So some of the KPIs I've mentioned uh, are part of the template. Some of them are included in the templates that you have in some of those tools, and some of them. Uh, uh, some of them do exist, so some of them you might have to find a way to create them manually. So when you're making, this is another value in, in sense that when you're making your um, vulnerability management tools, when you're performing tool selection, you also need to pay attention to the reporting. You need to ask as many questions as regards reporting. Um, can you can these two provide us with this type of report? Can you share some of this when you're providing your when you're running your proof of concept? This is where you can also you know, ask a lot of as many questions when it comes to reporting. Um, another thing you can also leverage on is Microsoft Power BI. Um, it's a great tool that you can actually use to also create your own dashboards. So, per adventure, the, the vulnerability management tool you're making use doesn't have that flexibility to be able to create uh, more dashboards. You can leverage on Power BI um, and then make some tweaks, um, create your data set, and then use that to create your dashboard as well. And then you can also leverage on SIM solutions. Um, so, most vulnerability management tools solution can integrate with um, same solutions using APIs. So your qualities, your tenable, your rapid server, you can integrate them into your same solutions, be it your Splunk, be it your um, Curator, or you know, depending on your um, SIM solution that you, you actually make use of. So you can also integrate them into your same solutions and then you can leverage and report and make um, um, we will put in solutions um, that you have in those team solutions and then you can use that to also create your report. Okay, so thank you very much for viewing this long and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.